Alrighty, howdy folks. Um, man, the very first introduction. Um, you notice that I said howdy folks? Well, I probably will start every lecture by doing that. That's because when I first came from India to America, uh, I was surprised that people would say, hey, how's it going? To a perfect stranger. I was like, you never see that happen in India. So I was like, what's up with this? And and so I didn't even know what to say when somebody says, hey, how's it going? Uh, and then I heard somebody else say, hey, how's it going? And this guy goes, uh, pretty good. How are you, man? Aha, so that's what you're supposed to say, eh? I figured that out. And so after that, when somebody says, hey, how's it going? I'm like total cool American, you know. I say, pretty good, man. How are you? You know. And then one day somebody said, howdy. And I was like a deer caught in headlights. I had no idea what my response ought to be. But the stupid guy that I am, I said to that gentleman, excuse me, excuse me, can I ask you a question? When you said howdy, what am I supposed to do? And he looks at me like, man, you must be stupid. Um, yeah, I am, okay. Uh, so what do you say? And he goes, well, you say howdy back. Aha. Uh -huh. And so, just to make myself comfortable with this howdy, I decided every one of my classes, I'll say howdy, folks. Cool? Alrighty. Uh, without much further ado, let's go with uh, my name. My name is, uh, let me close this window. My name is uh, Dr. Sam Larry Metlop. I know what, this exam, what, what's the last name? And I know you'll have trouble. That's why I did the right thing here, right? Pronunciation guide. How do you say that last name? Let's see. Can you give it a try? Can each of you just for yourself? Notice that it's got four syllables. Na, re, met, la. Na, re, met, la. Na, re, met, la. Right? Those of you who can trill R's, R, ruffles of ridges. You can say Nari Metla, but if you cannot, that's totally cool. Nari Metla is perfectly fine. Cool? All right. Uh, my PhD is in mechanical engineering, and uh, though I'm teaching in the math department, that's because I love. I love teaching, I love math, and so I am totally happy doing doing this. Okay? Cool. Um, maybe maybe I'm mentioning that for another reason. You might you might see that I I I will have some tendencies of of talking about some engineering applications as I as I uh, go through this course. That's because of my background. Okay? I hope that's okay with you. And those of you who are probably not going to be engineers, if you don't understand the example, the engineering examples I give, eh, don't worry about it, okay? All right. The syllabus uh, says that we need to start with uh, some functions or something like that. Eh, I think the best starting point is logic. And some of you probably already had it, and so this may be just a refresher course. Uh, so it's a it's a good idea to go through this. What do I mean by logic? Um, definition. A proposition is a statement that is either true or false. Okay? And now notice uh, one thing. Mathematics going, uh, and eh, just about any subject is going to be very easy if you understand and memorize the definitions, theorems, laws, those kinds of things. Right? You, you That's the first thing. What's a proposition? If you can come up with a definition, 
and so much power to you because when asked of a certain when asked a certain question all you need to do is hmm, wait a minute uh, that question's got this term what's the definition of that term and if you can recall the definition based on the definition you can answer it i'll give you plenty of examples of that throughout the course okay all right so uh, let's see can can i come up with an example do you think uh, this is washington dc the capital city of united states is that a proposition or not right look at look at me i'm asking you a question right and uh, i'm asking hey, is this a proposition so what do you need to do you should ask yourself hey, what in the world is the a proposition oh it's a statement uh, with some properties is this actually a statement washington dc is the capital city of united states yeah it's a statement now the question is can we answer this statement with whether whether or not it is true washington dc is that true uh, yep it is true so this is a proposition now let me ask another one 2 plus 2 equals 22 is that a proposition so is that a statement yeah it's a statement somebody is mentioning I'm here I am saying hey 2 plus 2 equals 22 now the question is is it true or false oh clearly false right I sincerely hope you didn't go yeah man that's right man 2 plus 2 is 22 oh, I would have had I would have a heart attack if you said that all right 2 plus 2 is 22 that is definitely a statement which is false cool so these are these two things are propositions all right and uh, now with that what are non-examples uh, is hello a a proposition is hello a statement yep hello is certainly a statement can you answer whether it is true or false uh, nope you cannot so that is not a hello is not a proposition similarly what's up uh, that ain't a proposition because you can't ask hey is that true or false right that's the idea that let's move on um, definition a conditional is a proposition of the form if P then Q right a conditional is a proposition of the form if p then q have you ever seen statements like this if this then that well uh, that's a conditional this is also stated as p implies q i'm going to use this imply sign quite a bit okay so be familiar with this you put a sort of a long equal sign and a arrow to the right and that is read as implies so p implies q or you can call it as if p then q Th that is a conditional okay example if x is a poodle then x is a dog okay does it first have the form if p then q right it does um, well is this a proposition how do you answer how do you even think about answering it going back go back to the definition what's a proposition it's a statement this is, is is it a statement yep it is a statement can you answer whether this is true or false yes you can right if x is a portal then x is a dog is that true yep if uh, some some animal that you pick happens to be a poodle then it's got to be a dog right so this is a proposition which happens to be true okay now there's one important thing i want to ask you does this look like if p then q answer is yes which part is p 
you get the question? Which part is called, which part is the P and which part is the Q? The right answer is X is a poodle. That is the P. Do not put if in if before it or anything like that. Simply X is a poodle is the P part, which is very important for you to recognize. And Q part is X is a dog. Cool. Good. I'll, I'll show you why, why I'm insisting on you understanding precisely which part is P and which part is Q in just a second. Okay. You will understand that. Second, if x equals 2, then x plus 3 equals 7. Does this look like a conditional? Mm, yep, it looks like if p then q, with p being equal to x equals 2, and q is x plus 3 equals 7. Now let's ask, is this proposition, is this conditional true? Uh, if x equals 2, then x plus 3 equals 7. Uh, nope, right? That's not true. Because x plus 3 should not, should be equal to 5 if x were to be 2. Uh, so we say false. You getting the hang of this? Cool. Now, let's move on to another definition. We dealt with conditional. Now, a converse of a conditional if p then q is a proposition of the form if q then p. Okay? Now, Please observe that converse is, converse of a conditional if p then q is, if q then p. Now, let me ask you. Go to the first example, if x is a poodle then x is a dog. So, take that as the conditional if p then q and now tell me, what is the converse of that? Now, how do you think about this? You go based on what's the definition of a converse. Well, the definition of a converse is that if you are looking at a converse of a conditional if p then q, then if q then p is the converse. Okay, in this conditional if x is a poodle, then x is a dog. What is p? x is a poodle. What's q? x is a dog. So what is if q then p? If x is a dog, then x is a poodle, right? As simple as that. And uh, so the converse of if x is a poodle, then x is a dog is, if x is a dog, then x is a poodle. Cool? Okay, now let's ask, is the converse true? If x is a dog, then x is a poodle. Is that true? Well, now you are like, I don't know, man, sometimes it is true, right? You could pick a dog and it in fact turns out to be a poodle. Ah, please pay attention to this. It doesn't matter if you can come up with a billion examples where that statement is true. Can you come up with one measly counterexample where that statement is false? Can you pick up a dog, but it is not a poodle? Of course, right? You could pick a Labrador. Definitely that Labrador is a dog, but it is not a poodle. So, if you can find one counter example, minimum, at just a measly one counter example, you have to say the statement is false. You don't even mince words in this case, right? That is the key. So this statement is false. Now, what is the converse of if x equals 2, then x plus 3 equals 7? If x plus 3 equals 7, then x equals 2, right? If q, then p. Make sense? Cool. Uh, now, if x plus 3 equals 7, would x equal to, is this statement true? Mm, nope, if x plus 3 is 7, x, you know, subtract 3 from both sides and x should be 4. Nope, so this statement is false. Cool? All right. Then, let's define what's called a negation. 
negation of a proposition P written as not P. You write like, I don't know, even know how to describe that. Uh, some kind of a turned L. Yeah, um, that not P is such that if P is true, then not P is false. And if P is false, then not P is true. It takes the opposite truth value of the negation takes the opposite truth value of a whatever it is uh, being pre whatever it precedes if p if negation precedes p and p is true then not p is false like that okay cool then we'll go with another definition called contrapositive a contrapositive of a conditional if p then q is a proposition of the form if not q then not p cool a contrapositive of if p then q is if not q then not p so now let me ask you uh, you can also write this as not q implies not p uh, let me ask you the question what is the contrapositive of the original conditional if x is a poodle then x is a dog do you remember that was the original uh, conditional that we had now i'm asking what is the contrapositive of this the contrapositive should be if not q now q is x is a dog not q what is what is the negation of x is a dog x is not a dog what is the negation of x is a poodle x is not a poodle as simple as that so now tell me what the contrapositive is right i'm sure you said if x is not a dog then x is not a poodle that is the contrapositive now let's ask one more thing is the contrapositive true if x is not a dog then are you guaranteed that x would not be a poodle yeah the moment you pick an animal which is not a dog there is no way that it somehow could end up being a poodle right so this statement is true and in fact what is important is when the conditional is true the contrapositive is automatically true cool the moment you have a conditional being true you can take it to the bank the contrapositive will be automatically true now there is one more thing called biconditional that i need to cover um, but before i do that you might be wondering why man why are you talking about all this stupid logic and propositions conditionals and all this nonsense that is because pretty soon in every section just about every section and a whole bunch of places throughout this course you are going to bump into stuff like this right pretty soon there would be something like if f is differentiable at a then f is continuous at a there's a theorem okay which goes if f is differentiable at a then f is continuous at a don't worry about exactly what that means and then uh what does that mean and then i would ask you okay what is the contrapositive of this theorem and then you should be able to figure out what the contrapositive is and now and then i will ask you okay is the contrapositive true and you go yep contrapositive is automatically true if the conditional is true aha so you're saying if f is not continuous at a then f is not differentiable at a yeah and tell you what you have just gleaned a lot more information from a single theorem because you looked at the converse and the contrapositive so what i want for every one of you to do is the moment you see a theorem from now on ask yourself what is the converse of the theorem is the converse true in this case what's the contrapositive of this well what are the implications of the fact that 
the contrapositive is automatically true since the theorem must be true. Boy, if you do that, your understanding of mathematics just shoots up like anything. Cool? All right, let's move on. Uh, however, if the condition is false, the contrapositive need not be automatically false. Okay, if the conditional is false, then the contrapositive need not be automatically false. If the condition is true, then the contrapositive is automatically true. Okay, all right. Um, let's look at what a biconditional is. A biconditional is a proposition of the form P if and only if Q. This is also stated as P and you put the, the it's an implies sign with the arrow going on both sides. And believe it or not, somebody could write with a simple uh, P and the double arrow Q like that. And you should read it as P if and only if Q. What? Yeah, you should. Okay. Now you might be like, what in the world does P if and only if Q mean? Huh. See, because you guys are English speakers, there are some phrases that you would have heard naturally in, in your day-to-day -day life. And you may have even used them. I'm sure like you can imagine a scenario where like the, the mother looks at the child and goes, Hey, Tommy, you get to play with your Nintendo if and only if you clean your room. It's like she will be wagging her finger and going, Hey, unless you do this, you can't do that kind of a deal. That's one of the places where you use that if and only if. Unfortunately, in mathematics, you do not use if and only if like that at all. There is no finger wagging going on at all. So what does P if and only if Q mean? Well, this biconditional refers to the situation where both conditional and converse are true. What? I thought you said when a con the converse is always. No, I never said a converse is always false. Converse could be false. You cannot automatically assume that the converse is true, but it is possible that it is true. Okay, it is converse. If the conditional is true, the converse need not be automatically true. Whereas the contrapositive will be automatically true. That's the difference. So, in the event that the conditional and the converse are true, you do not say, a big long statement like, well, if P then Q and if Q then P are both true. You don't have to say all of that. You can just succinctly put it as P if and only if Q. Automatically people should understand, aha, you mean uh, P if and only if Q means P implies Q and Q implies P are true. I see. So if P then Q and if Q then P. Now, let me give you an example x plus 3 equals 7 if and only if x equals 4. Can I say that? Let's see. Does it look like p if and only if q? Yup. So what is if p then q? Or p implies q for this? If x plus 3 equals 7, then x equals 4. Would you agree? If x plus 3 equals 7, then x equals 4. Is that statement true? Of course it is true. Now let me change it to the, the other side. Q implies P also should be true. Which would mean, if X equals 4, then X plus 3 equals 7. Is that true? Of course it is. Now notice, we didn't have to say, well man, if X plus 3 equals 7, then X equals 4. And guess what? If X equals 4, then X plus 3 equals 7. No. I could just simply go, dude, x plus 3 equals 7 if and only if x equals 4. And you know exactly what I mean. Cool? All right. Uh, this means the true. Yeah. That's it, folks. Uh, that's all for this lecture.